whom do they represent? While the Occupy movement has certainly drawn attention to the discontent roiling in the depths of the American heart, they are a small percentage of those who have chosen to hit the streets just as cold weather begins to grip many parts of the nation. And while it may be that their numbers and breadth have been impressive, most people, even if they agree with many of their aims, have yet to take it to the streets, at least not yet. But who can deny that discontent with the economic elite and their political servants is widespread? According to recent polls, Congress garners the support of a mere 10% of Americans. Or put quite another way, 90% of Americans don't support Congress. 90%. When such an overwhelming percentage of the citizenry oppose the politicians in office, in what sense can this be called a democracy? In a parliamentary system used in most of Europe, such abysmal levels of public support would have necessitated a no-confidence vote. But here in the States, a rigid, sclerotic political system has become a prison and an obstruction to most of the people, and politicians openly and proudly look to the narrow interests of the wealthy elites those the Occupy movement deride as the 1%. The people are rightly pissed at politicians who are the paid puppets of the plutocrat class. While Neo Rome burns, they light up their imported cigars with $100 bills. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. I don't have anything fancy to say today. Um, so well, we're talking about a council. Okay, can um, we introduce other people? Oh, oh, oh you want me to do that? Okay. Oh, you have no. We're going to introduce. Happy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm Kevin Karen. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm back to talk about um, the conflict in Ukraine and okay. the, the and and the uh, conflict with Russia that has come out of it um, as well. So I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me again. All right, we got Kane. The Hebrew is right. Is that is a is that ain't your brother? You done said yes, <laughs> are all wretched. I love all that. Right. <laughs> I really like that. No, Don, we're gonna get into it because Brother Kevin got some very interesting things to say about Russia. Uh, Secretary of State of uh, State Pompeo. The same person in his administration, Barack Obama. And so the head of right, his right. administration. Mm -hmm. Well, and see, that's why we got to get down to what a council is. Because, you know, America <laughs> talks about it being a democracy. So we're going to get down to it. And, we, and, and it's funny, we're dealing with a country. Can we turn the mic down, please? Like Russia. Can we turn the mic down, please? We're getting feedback. Get the studio monitor this time. Oh, man. See, this is what we do when we have. There we go. ghetto stuff. Okay, let's get started, Kevin. Sure. Uh, so we should we should probably start with a little bit of a review, I think, okay. um, maybe for for listeners. Uh, so there's this conflict in Ukraine that people have been hearing about, and if you flip through any uh, Western media, I think if you look through New York Times that comes out every day, if you're listening to even if you're watching Vice News, which I think right. did have some interesting reporting, but now has really gotten uh, well not has really gone with the West, I think, uh, you, you will get a view of the situation that suggests that uh, Vladimir Putin is trying to recreate the Soviet Union. That seems to be what a lot of people uh, like to say. Um, that's what a lot of our most hawkish people in our government, I think, have been saying. And personally, I think that's a view that we should challenge, and we should try to understand where that view comes from, and we should also try to understand what the other side thinks. Um, I'm happy to be here to talk a little about that. So this conflict, um, you can start at different points in history, right? right? But the eruption in Ukraine, I would say, started about two years ago. In 2013, there was an economic deal that was offered to Ukraine from the European Union. Say, hey, we're going to make a deal. We're going to loan you some money because you need it really badly right now. The only thing you have to do is cut ties with Russia. Ukraine has been uh, associated with Russia for a very long time. They have a lot of history. There's overlap. I mean, they share a border. There's overlap in the language. Um, 
and uh, many people intermarry and things like that. And so this is very difficult. There's a lot of people in Ukraine who said, we can't cut ties with Russia. At the time, there was a Russian supporting president of Ukraine, Yanukovych. Okay? Uh, this whole deal uh, was basically a problem. And so Vladimir Putin and uh, Russia had offered the deal. They said, hey, go ahead. Let's, why don't we have a tripartite agreement? Let's have an economic agreement that allows us all three. Why do we have to cut ties with Russia? Why make Ukraine choose? That's a complicated thing for Ukraine to do. But those options were denied by the EU, and they were denied most strictly by Washington, by our country, the United States. And so uh, once they were forced to choose the former president of Ukraine, Yanukovych, he sided with Russia because he's always sided with Russia. He was a puppet of the Russian government and uh, you know, did lots of corrupt and, and wrong things mm. as, as part of that. But he sided with Russia. And so then people flooded the streets. Uh, this was what was the beginning of the Maidan revolution. That's what everybody uh, kind of is calling it now. Uh, some people call it a coup. Some people call it a revolution. But by one year later, in February 2014, uh, this really got out of control. The U.S. had been supporting the protesters. You had Victoria Newland of the State Department. You had John McCain, who we all know, oh, yeah. uh, down in the streets feeding cookies to the protesters and encouraging them to keep protesting. Um, feeding yeah, feeding cookies. Uh, the, and then... Uh, some of the good people who were in the streets, and lots of good people went to the streets because you're in a country like Ukraine, you don't want to be controlled by Russia, you don't want to be controlled by anybody, you want to, be, you want to have some sense of self-determination. Um, and there were a lot of people who wanted that, and I don't deny that. But there were a lot of people who came out the streets, and they got pretty violent. I mean, they started a lot of fires, right. and they were uh, going towards the White House, or towards what is the equivalent of uh, their White House. They were going to the Capitol. And uh, Yanukovych got scared because he all of a sudden was losing control of his government. And in his eyes, you know, he thought some violence could be uh, brought upon Absolutely. him. And so he left and he went to Russia. And then a bunch of the pro US people got together in the capital and said, President's gone. We get to make a new president. That was not constitutional. It was not constitutional under their constitution. And in fact, you hear the president now, our new president, who's pro-US, uh, Petro Poroshenko is his name, um, he is even saying these days that uh, that was unconstitutional, the overthrow. And I think he's saying that because he doesn't want to be overthrown. Um, mm. And uh, that's, that's just my opinion. But uh, now we're in a situation. So that was February 2014. Uh, February 2014, Yanukovych left and they instituted a new government that we have supported. The uh, West has supported since then. Uh, then, in uh, 2015 so far, in February 2015, we're a year later from that overthrow, right? Mm. There's been a lot of fighting because there's a Russian kind of supporting region and some say Russian controlled region right. in eastern Ukraine I mean, called the Nazis. Right, Donbass and right. Crimea. Um, and no, 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 that's not where you have the Nazis. Okay. Um, the uh, neo-Nazis that you're referring to, they are the ones who became violent in the streets in uh, Kiev and helped to foment the overthrow of Yanukovych. Okay. Um, these, this neo-Nazi uh, group fights on behalf of Western Ukraine. They mm -hmm. fight on behalf of our people. Oh, our um, people. Oh. The, and, and, some of the, and these are the fighting battalions. These are the groups that control the military. And uh, they've actually been asking uh, Poroshenko to become, they've been asking uh, the president there to become more aggressive and to fight back the Russians more. Um, and so they want US help, and they want our weapons, and they want our stuff so that they can fight off the Russians and reclaim this territory that they believe is theirs, OK? Now, there's, there's two different narratives that we have to go so, with both of them. Yeah, we always got to look, because I'm always asking, what? What kind of resources are we talking here? Kevin? What kind of research? Yeah. Resources. Oh, uh, resources. All the fighting. Come resources. on now. Well, Come on, Kevin. Um, I think that, I, uh, you know. I know water's one of them. 
Water is one of them. Okay. There's uh, some important pipelines that in, go through Ukraine. Okay, and strategic positions too. Okay, strategic positions on Russia's border. Okay, um, and you know these pipelines carry a lot of energy. Okay, and uh, you know part of this is also, I mean, so what the West has wanted, what the EU has wanted, that right, the conditions of their economic agreement that they wanted Ukraine to agree to, has always been liberalization of the economy. And that means opening up to Western development, Western investment. They want us to be able to buy and invest in their country. So and they want the capitalization. Right. They, the, right. No, and, and, and I, I think that's accurate. And I think both regimes are both sides, whether Russia controls the territory or the U.S. controls the territory, um, is going to be problematic. It's going to be corrupt. It's going to lean towards one way or the other. Um, yeah. What I am concerned about is I'm, I'm concerned about nuclear war. I'm concerned about right. the idea that over this whole thing, we're going to get in a fight with Russia because that's what our political leaders are saying now. So this is recent news now, okay? Right. Ashton Carter, our Secretary of Defense, he's new. Um, he went to the Baltics. He went to some of these countries that are bordering Russia, and he met with NATO. And he said that we need to put weapons there. We need to start putting weapons on the border of Russia because he keeps, he keeps saying Russia's trying to recreate the Soviet Union. Putin's on a march to take more territory. This is the hallmark of people who are saying they want war with Russia. Um, and so he's positioning tanks there right now in Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Bulgaria, Romania, and Poland. There's training exercises. Uh, there's heavy weaponry. We're talking tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, and artillery right. that are all going there. And the newspapers say this is the first time since the Cold War we've had weapons on Russia's border. That's inaccurate. It's actually the first time in history. Um, during the oh, Cold War, wow. we did not have actual no, heavy we weaponry on the border. Right. Wow. So, uh, and, and on the Russian side, uh, the chief of staff for Putin, his name is uh, Sergei Ivanov, has made some statements saying that the relations have deteriorated. They've gotten so bad that the, his quote is, rhetoric is going off the scale. And he said, you know, if the US is really going to position all this heavy weaponry here, right. then we're going to respond. Oh, um, absolutely. He didn't detail what the response is going to look like, but he's going to respond. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. And I want to you know, give this opportunity for people to jump in and, and share some of their own thoughts and research. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so, so you're saying that they actually, you know, for the first time, there's actual literal like armory and stuff at the borders where they weren't dur during the first Cold War. That's where they're moving them. Correct. Correct. Wow. That's. That's really significant. I feel like um, within recent years, the United States has has become bolder in a, a lot of its aggressive imperialism, and a lot of you know. And you know, I'm pretty sure that if somebody's moving aggressively, the U.S. is usually front of it. And so, when I think about, um, I, I will say that I am also concerned about nuclear war, but it doesn't seem to be. Why isn't anybody talking about this? Like, you know, in the mainstream media, from what I see, you know, you can regularly see reports of all sorts of things, from everything from a white woman pretending to be black to, you know, recent uh, church burnings and stuff like that. But yet we don't hear about the Ukraine. And uh, I believe from a previous show uh, you had mentioned, or was it Vincent, that uh, the Ukraine itself was, uh, you know, a significant source of wheat and grain. But then there's also these uh, conflicts with uh, Russia and the fear that it's going to become the Soviet Union again. I'm wondering if that's also about, you know, the United States seems to have settled into its, you know, world power empire. And yet, um, when the Soviet Union ceased to become the Soviet Union and became Russia, it became less like that. It, uh, it was almost like no one can challenge the United States. So. Is this what we're worried about um, in terms of what uh, Russia is doing? That you know somebody might take our position, you know, 
I don't know. I, I, I feel like there's a lot of things going on here, and I find it interesting that with everything that's going on in the world, that something this serious is not being spoken about. You know, I, I, think, um, I think that some people are afraid to talk about this issue. Um, I think some of that might be left over from the Cold War <coughs> and the Red Scare. And right. I, I actually think this is dangerous for us at this point because if, if, you know, in a year, if we have U.S. soldiers and Russian soldiers killing one another or two years or however long it could be, because this could continue to escalate, then that means that anybody in the U.S. who's talking about socialism or communism right. is going to be demonized in the same way that they were demonized during the Cold War. Right. So I think this is something that's very relevant to movement building as well. Because when you're at war, the media is afraid to talk to you if you know you might sympathize with Russia a little bit or something right. like that. Now, I want to be clear, and I talked about this with a friend on the way over, that um, it can be very difficult. If we choose to view the world as superpowers right, fighting over territory, you know, we're making some mistakes as people, you know? But I, I, because we should, be, we should be thinking about how we can build a better world and things like that. Um, but, but I certainly think it's important for us to understand certain relationships to avoid conflict. And what I mean by that is to avoid nuclear war, right? right absolutely. So for example, uh, during Bush's presidency, right before Obama, we backed out of the uh, ballistic missiles treaty. This missiles, okay, so Reagan and Gorbachev were the only two people, only two uh, people in history to make a deal that eliminated one class of nuclear weapon hmm. called short range ballistic missiles. They agreed to eliminate them because these are missiles that if you fire them, you only have about 30 seconds to decide whether that's an incoming nuclear missile or whether it's something else. And so they said, this is dangerous. 30 seconds. Um, and, and so th it was a good agreement in the sense that if we get rid of this particular class of weapons, then we can kind of draw down certain conflicts. We don't have to have 30 seconds to decide right. a, a <laughs> nuclear war. Right. Um, but we backed out of that treaty. We backed out of that treaty under Bush. Um, and everything has escalated even more. We've started building more of those weapons. Uh, now, so that the thirty-second uh, ballistic is still an imminent threat. Uh, correct. It's wow. becoming a threat <laughs> oh, now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we're we're in the process of of making this into, and I would argue, you know, in this the, that we're in a new Cold War. I mean, we're in the beginnings of what is a new Cold War with Russia, uh, where we're building up. There's this arms race going on. Um, and so I think that people need to start talking about this and start talking about solutions. And there is one solution I would like to mention as well, that sure. I, I at least. Well, my concern is, as a novice looking in this from the outside in is the proletariat. Proletariat, for those who may not have heard that word in a while, it has to do with the working class. The last time we had this discussion about the Ukraine, it had to do with the working class people having to at the internal fight with the controlling factors of the, the government. And you're saying the people who run the government want America and its support. But I think that when we look at, uh, basically, when you're talking about the poor versus the rich, the wealthy want money. The poor just want to be able to feed their families and take care of their, the lands that their fathers have, uh, you know, put agriculture on that, the sweat and blood of their ancestors. So when you have a people who've been in the land for a particular period of time, and you have the wealthy that are fighting for resources, the resource that most nations fight for is land, period. Land is the resource. Now what's on the land becomes additional resources. So even though you say that the uh, government and the government is a nautical term that simply means the rich, the organized people. The organized people want to keep wealth. The poor just want to be able to eat. So in what? the Ukraine... I disagree with that. Get that on. Okay, and to what extent? As a poor person myself, I want to be able to um, 
have say so in this procedure that we have here because we have on both sides hawks on the Russian side and mm -hmm. hawks on our side. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to talk to Obama or maybe care whoever mm -hmm. it is and see if we can come up with some solutions like Kevin's about to present Well, here. see, this is... Uh, see uh, all what, that boo-hoo and we poor and we, that's, that's a defeatist attitude. Well, the point is that you're talking about in a country that feigns itself to have a democracy. Democracy well, then that democracy. Uh, allows for the working poor to have, uh, in a sense, a voice. But what here we're not talking about democracy in the Ukraine. Am I correct? I, I, I mean, depending on which side, I don't think either side is espousing any a, any brand of democracy that I want to live under. Exactly. So therein lies the point where the poor are just tools used by the rich. But again, no. the strategy of the poor is to sustain their families their ancient lands, and to be able to provide for the ancestors. Yes, we just got Actually, a I have a thought about that. Um, as, a, as another poor person, uh, you know, I mean, I definitely want to eat. You right. know, my, my exactly. stomach I is about too. to grab my back right now. Exactly. But I also want to be able to control my destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel like, you know, I am just as capable to make decisions, just as capable to participate in the decision making That's that right. my government makes. Mm -hmm. Like if they shoot nuclear, you know, missiles over here, mm -hmm. they're not going to shoot Obama and be like, "Boom, we got you, Obama." That takes sure. out all of us. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is definitely, you know, definitely an important issue. Definitely important for those who are like, "What does Ukraine have to do with me?" Mm -hmm. But it also concerns me. Now, I, I, I was thinking about the anti-war movement. Right. I'm thinking about also the uh, the uh, cautions from people to. Be, for our, uh, protesters to be nonviolent, to be peaceful, mm -hmm. all these right. peaceful solutions. Mm -hmm. And so, where are these folks while the United States is warmongering all over the world? And Russia. And now, possibly, well, yeah, but you know, right. we can't, I'm not sure what we can do with Russia. Mm -hmm. But we are here in the United States. This is supposed to be our country. Well, Dawn, we can push back on, first of all, it sounds like, from what Kevin was saying, is that the aggressor, what was his name again, Kevin? That he is, so, so it sounds like from what Kevin read is that Russia's saying, no, back up off our front door. They're not on our. They're not on the U.S. No. front door. They're no. we're on their front door. So yeah. we are so the we aggressor. Be, so so we need we need we need to start. They um, need. Okay, the United States. No, um, we need to. No, we need. They work for us, Gideon. That's how it works in a democracy. So the United States needs to stop interfering. You know, because with, before the war on ISIS, you know, some of the things that the president said was talking about U.S. interests. Mm -hmm. We need to stop, you know, pretending we're going to go save people, that we're going to go spread democracy everywhere, mm -hmm. because we don't. We, we remove dem democratically elected leaders. Mm -hmm. um, we need to stop, uh, you know, like what's happening between Russia and Ukraine, that needs to happen between Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Like we have to deal with our home here. You know, what are we doing? You know, we need to work on our democracy here. Yeah, but see, one thing that you're forgetting is the one world government that's being established. And see, that's why I say the poor are the antithesis of the rich that are controlling the government and the military. Get in. No. See, the environment is at stake here. So when you have military, you have environmental destruction. That's why I talked about the poor and their concepts of being able to maintain their lands of their ancestors and feed their children. And then you've got the rich who want capitalism, which means money uh, from the world market, but yet the vast majority of the poor are they're ostracized from that ability to, to gain access. But I would also add that you know, the poor, you know, poor people are not this, this monolith that, you know, uh, is is incredible, you know, incredibly moral, and that sort of like we just want communism. One of the reasons why um, socialism is kind of like taking hard hold here, or even aggression towards the one percent, the rich, or whatever, mm -hmm. is because that you know there's that dream, sort of like you know I can be one day the the person at the head of power. I mean, what would mm -hmm. what did little Barack think? You know, like you know he wanted to be head of the empire you in know? a democracy, and he was also poor. But a socialist you know, regime is different. That's the point. We were brought up 
And in how this, would we define socialist resort? Mm -hmm. Well, the socialism in its pure sense should be, that's why I'm saying this particular, as the way Kevin has set it up, it's like you have the government, which represents the rich, controlling the economics and the military, and the poor just pawns to be able to just pick up the pieces from whoever wins, whether it's Russia, the Ukraine, or whatever, and they're just left to try to eke out a living. And that's true. But the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of, a lot of these so-called poor people can be, you know, encouraged to participate in the system to ease their condition. I think about... You mean um, joining the military? <laughs> well, think about it this way. We, have, we do not have a draft in this country, but we have a poverty draft. Exactly. People, you know, go into the military to pay for college, to travel, to sustain exactly. themselves. And actually, as part of the uh, original uh, of the DREAM Act, there was a military component to citizenship. That's right. Sure. Um, there's also, you know, let's talk about the other military that, you know, nobody wants to call the military the police. Yes. You know, it's like a lot of those folks... Hey, you know, there was one time I was looking for uh, jobs, right? And you know, it seemed like the only people hiring were the military and the police. Absolutely. And so, you know, that's why when we talk about the police, you know, we talk about the one percent and the ninety-nine percent. There was a lot of people who believed that the police were part of the ninety-nine percent. Mm -hmm. And you know, it is true they do not themselves control the means of production. Right. They do not themselves possess large amounts of of wealth. Right. But they defend those who do, but it's and they by... participate. So those, there are some who would argue that they are the proletariat as well. Right. And then there are some who would argue that they are not because of their position. Well, Kevin, I want you to jump back in here because what uh, the propaganda machine is controlled by the wealthy. And also, the, and the one thing that the rich tend to not consider is the environmental impact that war has on the children, the environment, our ability to sustain our, the human race. So you've also, you mentioned nuclear war. And that's one of the things that uh, Black always mentioned. Well, how do you protect? You've got to have nuclear armament. But then on the opposite end of nuclear armament is human annihilation. No nukes. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, no nukes. so you've got these mad, wicked people. And, and let me just say this. America, Russia, all the rich and wealthy are working together. The issue, saber rattling and the Cold War whoa, 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 whoa. is a pretense. Get in, get in. Wait, 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 let, me see, let, me, let me explain why I say explain that. that because they are all using the same fuel sources. They're all they're petroleum based. So that makes them more apt to fight each other. That makes them they're in control. See, whenever you get out of the fight, then you create what this government and Barack is talking about, renewable energy sources that don't require going into the earth and extracting the essence of the earth. But these people have, uh, you know, you, like in basketball, they say you live by the jumper, you die by the jumper. When you go by non-renewable resources like petroleum-based fuels and all of the industrialized nations are doing that, then you're heading down the same road to hell that the rest of the nations. But those intelligent people know that we have unlimited resources in renewable energy, whether it's thermal, whether it's water, I mean, they're, so these people are working together. At the, at the end of, the, when you part all the curtains and the smoke uh, clears, the people that it's are dealing with either. these type of fuel sources are working together. Well, Ken, I, what's some of the solutions you got? Give me a second, Don, because, oh, no, no, okay. oh. Well, uh, I mean, I, I want to, so there's a lot of sentiments that I want to work in here, but I, I do want to mention, um, so there's a question about what we should do now. And uh, I think that what we should do is, is try to consider how do we stop fighting? How do we stop <laughs> right. the, the military aggression? Yes. How do we help people out? And that brings me to the current, uh, the current US policy being pushed forward. This has not been embraced yet, but it's being pushed forward. The US, there are many in the US who are calling for a complete blockade against eastern Ukraine. That means people who are just there, uh, who don't want any part in the conflict, many of whom have had to move around because uh, they are refugees. trying to avoid the fighting. Yeah, they're refugees <laughs> right. in their own areas. Um, they will starve if, exactly. if we Absolutely. blockade uh, that area. The terms for peace, there, there is an official proposal for terms for peace, 
that has been informally called the Minsk II Agreement. Yes, I heard about that. This was in February 2015. The president of France, the president of Germany, Vladimir right. Putin from Russia, That's right. and the president from Ukraine all met and came to an agreement that there would be a ceasefire, which has not held very well. Right. Um, and the conditions for the ceasefire had to do with basically allowing Eastern Ukraine to, relate, to, to uh, remain part of Ukraine and become a sort, of, uh, a, a sort of federated area so that they would have their own home rule and be able to go and vote in Kiev and, and be able to participate in all these different a things. Vassal state. Um, and, and so that agreement... Uh, has been agreed to by those four parties, uh, you know, France, Germany, Russia, and Ukraine. Okay. Ukraine. What's the problem? Uh, well, the problem is that the U.S. Uh, doesn't doesn't like this oh, wow. agreement, <laughs> and it's not all the U.S. It's some of the U.S. And this is where it gets confusing. Um, when you say some of the U.S., what do you mean exactly? What I mean is some of the, the military leaders. industrial complex. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> well, the. Our, our political leaders are controlled by the rich. There's exactly. no question about that. Um, okay. And, and uh, that there's a split in our, in our uh, political leadership, even within the Democratic Party. Absolutely. For example, John Kerry went to Sochi, where the Olympics were, mm -hmm. but he, he went after. He went uh, just, a, just about a month ago. And he met with Sergei Lavrov, who is their foreign minister, um, and Vladimir Putin came to the meeting for four hours, and they talked. And John Kerry committed, gave a speech there, and said, we will commit to enforcing the Minsk II agreement. He said, let's have peace. That was our Secretary of State who said that. Yes. He came home to hear his, who is technically supposed to be a subordinate in the State Department, Victoria Newland, this woman I mentioned earlier who was feeding cookies to protesters, speaking from Kiev and saying, we will not support Minsk. We are going to retake the Donbass and retake Crimea. <laughs> okay. And so she's disagreeing with uh, John Kerry. Barack Obama then supported Victoria Nuland and did not support his Secretary of State. And so there's this, there is, wow. there's a group of people who, you know, and we don't know who's, who's behind all this. We don't know who's making all the decisions. But we know that our political leadership is split and confused, and there are some issues going on. But there's a battle for whether we're going to go for the Minsk II agreements, and, or, or at least work on the Minsk II agreements a little bit, um, and work for peace, or whether we are going to say that Putin is on a march to recreate the Soviet Union, and we need to stop him by force. Well, see, you, just, you have to realize the power of the warmongers. Wait, wait, and hold how a much that money mm -hmm. warmongering has made, will make, and is projected to make in the future. That's what capitalism is. So, so, so can we do this? Since I hear his argument about yeah. capitalism, can we have a, I don't know, maybe a transparent voting system? Since this is a democracy, right? <laughs> Where we have all the people come forward and say, do we want to have the men's student agreement or do we want to starve out Ukraine? I think, and, and I understand we have rich people, so let's have a transparent, open structure. Well, see, one term so you may not have taken into consideration is called two words, collateral damage. See, in a military uh, What's that got to do with transparency? Well, we there, about there are the sacrifices mm -hmm. that in a military campaign, which is what this is developing into, that that is a uh, part of the whole strategy, i.e., Haiti. Yeah, was yeah, a, hold on. What's this got to do with transparency? I am offering the solution of transparency before the world, before the world. Transparency. That's kind of like the Easter Bunny in Santa Claus. No, it's not. It's a great no, concept, it's not. but no, it's actually, not reality. No, it's not. It's reality. In in, in uh, what, what you, with Chavismo. Down in Honduras, it was a reality, their voting system. 
Carter even said it himself. It's the best voting system in the world. Transparency does work. It's not some fantasy. No, land. I'm not saying it could not work if, we if it is it. a reality. The reality you've got to, oh, what's right, called you don't like voting, do you? What's you called don't corruption, voting, yeah. sir. Right. Well, right. actually, here's something that um, I don't know. When you just said, uh, so you have John Kerry, you know, going to going to Russia and saying, "Hey, we want peace," and we have Victoria Newland saying, "Nah." And then we have Barack Obama saying, yeah, no. Nah. What? Why isn't there a discussion about why we're having right. these right. state representatives disagree in right. such a public manner? Like this is, you know, what is this? What is? How does this make our uh, our Secretary of State look? That's right. You know, how does this? Ma I mean, like, you know, and and also with our false narratives here in this country. You know, we keep telling people they need to be peace. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still upset about that. Oh, go for they it. Keep trying, yeah. They keep trying to tell us how to be peaceful every time we get shot. You know, we got to make sure we're peaceful and stuff like that. And then here, our state leaders are saying, nope, we're just going to go hard. I've got to give you two reference points. Iran, Contra, Ali North. And then Benghazi. I don't, recall. I don't recall. Yeah, well, you're a little young. No, well, I was let's saying, bring... that's what he used to say. Yeah, okay. Oh. <laughs> so, so, okay. Benghazi. So okay. you have, what we're talking about is a conflict within the government itself where there's infight. You have shadow governments that are really controlling the effect of what the one side or another says. And that's what you just illustrated. You've got one government, two sides. And yet one is saying, let's work for peace. And the other side is saying, no, we need to fight because so, so it's our first money. So black president has actually disagreed with his state, with his state, it was secretary of state, who, who he chose, right? That's right. OK, so here, you know, so, so what's going So I'm saying, what are we, you know, those of us who look to Obama, and, and I do not count myself as that. Puppet. <coughs> but, well, oh, there, are, there are people who, you know, who, who believe in Obama's innate goodness and who believe in his exhortations of, of, of peace. And so here we have a very public you know, decision to be like, yeah, we're not going to be peaceful. We're going to get into it. And this is after decade of war in Afghanistan, you know, at least a decade of Iraq. war in Afghanistan, in Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the war in ISIS. We're talking about, we're cutting, we're cutting food stamps over here. Drone okay. bombings we're all over the planet. We're trying to say that in order to, you know, right. balance our debt, we have to, you know, you know, do something to Social Security. And yet, when you look at the U.S. discretionary budget, 55% of it, at least, goes to the military. Thank you. Goes to military bases all over the world. Make my point for goes me. Goes to everything. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is that... So for those who are looking at this, and maybe Kevin, what do you think? You know, you have this president who's talking out of one side of his mouthpiece, and out of the other side, we're gonna go get you. What? What else? Well, I no, I absolutely think that's correct. But I also absolutely think that you're gonna hear that on both sides of this issue, right? We we don't need to pick a side. Like you were, what we were discussing this whole narrative of uh, there's a good guy and a bad guy, yeah. or a good person and They're a bad person, right? Right, uh, <laughs> right, right, right. We need Bingo. to we need to talk about organizing, right? And um, we need to talk about uh, how do we build nation or not nations <laughs> necessarily, but how do we build groups that can work for peace and. I mean, yeah, be able to defend themselves when necessary, uh, be able to, to negotiate and, and work out a scenario that is going to be best. The reason, I want to be clear that the Minsk II agreement is an agreement made by a bunch of rulers of nations. Yeah. Right. And, and so, yes, this is a path to stop fighting in Ukraine right now that these political leaders might be able to agree to. And I think we should, I, I think, I think our president should agree to it. However, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't solve the issues for the people of Ukraine. Exactly. Who don't want to be ruled by, well, the people of Ukraine who are all different, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the people of Ukraine who yeah, are... the Minsk Agreement, we, at least we want to stop the blockade, though. Right, no, and, and absolutely. By, by absolutely. Obama bringing a Democratic president, it seemed like he would go with the majority. 
I think, especially I'm a little confused. Talk, especially since he's eschewing all of this rhetoric about caring for the people, about <laughs> caring about people all over the world, as if the United States is this benevolent uh, yeah, uh, empire that's going around trying to help people out, and where you know a blockade would actually hurt the people yeah. and in Ukraine. Ukraine. No. I, I think that Barack Obama is has compromised. I mean, I think that has been a very Significant part of his presidency is to compromise with Republicans, to compromise with hawkish military figures. I think you could argue that uh, many of the things Kevin, he's done has I don't consider it a Kevin compromise. Went. I feel like he knew what the job was. Caved is the other word. And to be perfectly the other C honest, word. you know, he's not the only Democrat that is doing the, that doing these doing kind this. Of things. Yep. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, I haven't forgotten about Clinton and Somalia. I haven't forgotten about like all of these other presidents that you know, on the one Without hand, food. they talk about, oh, peace, wonderful people, and then they're, you know, aggressively attacking other people. Exactly. Sure. What I want, you know, as a poor person, as proletariat, I mm -hmm. guess, mm -hmm. um, I do not want my country to be known as someone who causes harm in the world. And the thing is, is that... Too late. Why, well, he, right. uh, true that. True well, no, that. He, but someone... the thing is, is that this would have reduced the amount, the mix, the mix, Minsk to agreement. Minsk to, yeah. I can't say. Agreement. You know, that is going to reduce the harm done by our country. And our country consciously and publicly said, no, we're not going to do that. Right. Even after our representative promised it. You know, that's, that's, well, that's Dawn, basic diplomacy. You, you just got to recognize, and I, see, me, we men, not to make any sexist statement. You did. Okay. <laughs> no, that, that was getting yeah. ready you know for what, that's, like, that's like saying, uh, that was, I'm not uh, racist, uh, but. Right. <laughs> see, and so, no, see, there. I'm actually, as a woman, as the only woman here, calling for accountability. Okay. Which right. the men should also be calling yeah, for. Yeah, well, you know. So, Gideon, let's address that. Okay, yeah, address well, that. see, the reality is that there's public genre and jargon and speaking about peace and love and bring us your poor and all of this. And then there's reality of who is financing it all. That's what I'm trying to say. And what we find is that we tend to believe that Barack Obama represents the huddled masses. He does not. He no, represents he the not. major corporations. That's the economic engine for capitalism, the military mm -hmm. industrial Complex, the military, I, I mean, the prison industrial complex, and all the other complexes I agree. that we as in, uh, poor masses have. What's the answer? Revolution is well, the answer. I would also say that another answer is that I would encourage people who are listening to this and people who are thinking about these issues to, you know, every. Maybe we shouldn't stand passively when he's making all these speeches, talking about peace, go. talking about everything else, and meanwhile engaging in these things. Like this man makes joke, jokes about uh, droning the Jonas Brothers. Yeah, uh, you know the thirteen-year-old boy was murdered earlier. Well, this didn't year. Bush make jokes at a five hundred dollar a plate dinner and looked up under the podium and said, "Well, uh, no weapons of mass destructions there." But people don't like. Bush. Come on, man. Yeah. There are a lot of people that if you. <laughs> try to hold anything accountable that this administration has done since day one and even beforehand, mm -hmm. people will, 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 will buck up against it but, because he'll just come and sing Amazing Grace and everything will be okay. But let me <laughs> throw this one at you. Even though they didn't like Bush, he was the wealthiest president of all time. He and Halliburton made more, more money, more money than any of the previous presidents. So he don't care whether you like him. But That's I'm what I'm saying. About duality. Accountability. If we're going to talk about <laughs> voting, right. And we're going to talk about a democracy. There Part of a democracy is being informed in that democracy. And right. when you vote somebody in, you're just like, hey, if, it's like if you get a job, right? Your, your boss is not just going to let you alone and just do whatever. You know, some jobs are great if they do that. But usually if you're not producing, then you lose that job. That's and the right. thing is, is that what we have become. Unless you're a as lawyer. An, as a nation, what we have become is let's vote for the Democrats so the Republicans won't get in. And they tell us, you know, if we vote in uh, Mitt Romney, we'll go to war, we'll do this. Guess what? We yeah. voted in Barack Obama. We went to war. We're going, in fact, we're talking about more wars. Make my point. So, Make my point. But, the, but, but what you're not hearing from me, because you're hearing a lot of like peace and love talk from me, and I'm, I'm actually. 
calling out the hypocrisy of Obama when he speaks to us. Absolutely. And I would encourage, especially black people who are listening, you know, just like, hey, you know, he, his family is cute, they're beautiful, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But this man is, is fully A aware killer. of the things that he is doing. It is yeah. not just that he is owned. Right. You know, he is a capable man. He is an intelligent man. Mm -hmm. And yet he is making these decisions on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And he does, and he makes no bones about it. But he is not making the decisions that be made for him. Come on, jump well, in Well, no, I was going to, I was going to, to go off of what uh, Dawn just said. No, he is the only person in this nation right now that can make this Minsk II agreement happen. He's wow. the only person who can do it. And he could have done it. He could have supported his Secretary of State, John Kerry. Mm -hmm. He could have said, we'll do Minsk II. Let's end this nonsense in Ukraine. They're going to let us ha they're going to let us keep our regime in Kiev. Right. They, we over we overthrew their government. They're going to let us keep it there. They want some autonomy on the side that borders Russia. Yes, Russia will control those territories. Yes, Russia's going to do some stuff that we don't like there. But you know what? This is a comp this is a way for us to end the conflict. Right. But that's not what he did. He right. doesn't want to end the conflict. He doesn't, he doesn't want, want autonomy. Again, you're so, forgetting the one world order concept. Go ahead. Continue. Well, right uh, right now, I think that I <laughs> right now I think Barack Obama is part of the group exactly. that wants to continue war with Russia. Escalate mm, you, and right. You and get the, it. <laughs> no, no, but what I'm saying, no, no. I'm we, sorry, the, I didn't the, the realize picture. my estrogen got in the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, what, what, say, what we're saying, you know, when Don talked about accountability, you have Russia, you have Ukraine, you have France. Yes. And one more country? Germany. It's Germany. Mm -hmm. Now, Arguably, uh, I'm just yeah. trying to hold accountable this just this concept of democracy, Gideon, where the, the majority rules. If we're gonna be democratic. So what I'm saying if is being in the United you States. Root your Kipling. I'm, what I'm saying is that Obama is not following protocol of a democracy. A democracy exactly. simply states that. If we're all at the table and I'm outvoted, then guess what? It's the majority rules. It don't, though, boss. That's well, the concept that's of the one percent. We are yeah. we're under this under this illusion. Well, then that gives us that this, that this drug of democracy. It's like taking well, listen, a, well, see, a you know see, speed. You're a distraction, Gideon. You're a distraction. <laughs> let, me, let me point out something very important. In the United States Constitution, it states when a government of the United States is not serving the people and not right. serving the whole purpose, which is a democracy. Revolution, baby. Then, not necessarily revolution, yeah. but you need to take out that leader. Yes. Or, or fire that leader. I'm just say fire. I don't want no drones or tomorrow. At least say something. Right. Yeah, yeah, a peach, a peach, <laughs> no, fire. But at least say something. Yeah. We got yes. people who won't even say boo. Right. Case in point this week. Mm -hmm. um, they had a celebration for, um, you know, this is Pride Month for mm -hmm. LGBT folks. Mm -hmm. And they had a celebration in the room. Mm -hmm. um, one woman, a trans woman mm -hmm. from uh, the floor was just like, hey, so this is a nice party in y'all. Mm -hmm. But what about LGBT folks? Who are be, who are in detention? Who experience violence? Mm. And you know what? All those good little liberals in there, mm. all of those who are all about freedom, whatever. Pretty much, you know, they escorted her out. They started chanting Obama, and Obama's like, "This is my house." Mm -hmm. right. So essentially, so essentially, it's like we can't even because most of what social media, ha, you know, a lot of people on social media has said. They said that she didn't do she didn't do it right. She didn't go through the proper channels. And I guarantee you, she's gone through the proper channels. I've gone through the proper channels for stuff. You've gone through proper channels for stuff. And you know what? We get ignored. Exactly. And, and the thing is, is that can't, we can't even just criticize the president. We can't even just say, you did this. You know, this is not what you're doing right. Why is it that in Selma, the anniversary of Selma, we have a group of people standing silently and there is no justice for Mike Brown? Mm -hmm. Like, this is an ongoing problem in this so-called democracy. So I, you know, I think that voting can work, but then we have to actually hold our government accountable. And we need to ask Obama, hey, what's up with this? How come you didn't agree to this no conflict? You talk about That's peace, right. you talk about all of these people experiencing violence from your state. Okay, because you know, he's the he's the commander in chief, therefore head of the executive branch. Okay. So that means he's everybody's boss. So Don, I, I'm gonna hold you 
and Kevin accountable with these uh, <coughs> activist groups. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. And, I, and I've talked to, you know, Misty about this too. You know, yeah. there's a lot of, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it's not democratic at all. <laughs> it's not democratic. Yeah, also, yeah. Like, yeah, I agree. Yeah, talking about this like top down? Yeah, so I agree with what you're council. saying. Let's talk about the council. Let's talk no, about but the council. I mean, oh. I mean, being real, like you're absolutely right. Yeah. I, you're absolutely right. I mean, it takes work. Right, I mean, it right. takes work. A lot of work to be democratic, to mm. have self determination, to have people make decisions collectively. It takes a lot of work, and you got to be willing to put in the work too. And I, no, I, I agree with you. Uh, we see a lot of activist formations and things that happen where we recreate. The same problems right. Yes. that right. we yes. have in society already. I would say we recreate what we know in a yeah. lot of ways. Yes. Well, they don't want autonomy. Wait, wait, get it, get it, dude. You want autonomy? Let's just add. Let's put you on the spot. Certainly. Really? Uh, yes. Seriously? Absolutely. I fought for it in this the Supreme Court of this country, as you well know. We were on the show. Well, it get it. As pertaining get to it. nationality. No, 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 no. No, I'm just saying. I'm not going home. into that. I'm just no, 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 but I'm saying, saying no, that, 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 that agenda, you, your name change, which you're about to talk about, well, was just know. for you. You. No, no, it wasn't. See, there's a no, bigger picture. No, Gideon. Who all agreed to that but you and the Hebrew Israelites? Well, there are many people that agree to having autonomy and knowing the their name nationality. Change. Right, well, the Hebrew Israelites. So the, the point saying, is, uh, reflecting back to the Ukraine, Okay. and this was the, one of the terms that he used, the people wanted autonomy in this Belfort, well, not the Belfort Agreement, I'm thinking Minsk. that. Minsk, Minsk Agreement, that would have been one of the concepts in there. That is, uh, goes against what I've been talking about, the new world order that Bush one spoke of, the many right, points of the I'm axis of evil and all of, of these other concepts. Yeah. I, think the to say all of, I think to say all of that also, um, I, I mean, I have to say I don't completely disagree with Gideon when he says that a lot of them work together because we do have things called like the G20, the G8, Thank you. Um, yeah. all yeah. of this other stuff. So, you know, they don't, I, I think when you said work together, that, that kind of connoted, you know, that they were, you know, friendly. Collusion. Together. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, what they're doing is that they're pooling their resources Thank to you. maintain power. Absolutely. Now, does this mean that the U.S. doesn't have a significant chunk of that power and doesn't run all of that? Like the U.S. runs the World Bank, the World Trade Organization, the International Monetary Fund, Thank you. and definitely dominates both the G8 and, the G and whatever G we got coming up. All the other G. You know? NATO in there. <laughs> and I would also right. say exactly. that when we keep talking about now. transparency, and let's not forget that the, that Obama personally pushed through the TPA, mm -hmm. the the fast it's, track, yes, mm -hmm. right. so that that's they, right. you know to avoid mm -hmm. any kind of amendments or anything else. Mm -hmm. To, to whatever trade deal that he wants to put through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, you know, all he has to do is, is basically keep smiling, do a little dance, exactly. and sing, sing a song. Right. And so what I'm I'm encouraging people Amazing to grace. do <laughs> is, you know, and definitely Slave holder. and definitely in our activist groups, our organizations and whatever, that we should we should be in a position where we are not working with these parties unless they are doing what That's we right. are demanding them to do. Well, now you're like, thinking. I think a lot of times, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm no, I know I'm glad you say that, and I'm, what I'm saying, and I'm a challenge, now you're thinking. Kevin, and I'm oh. a challenge, Don, that you bring anybody that's out of pocket with the whole democratic process, bring them on the show. We'll straighten them out. And we'll straighten them out <laughs> because we got to start from the bottom up. We got to have a strong exactly. foundation first before we go yeah. after the uh, oligarchies and new world orders. Because exactly. we can't work with uh, any exactly. of these political parties because, you know, well, first of all, they've, they've rarely worked for us unless we, the people, have made movements and pressured them to right. do so. I th I, it sickens me to hear all of these things about Obama mm -hmm. that, you know, he's done this, he's done that, as if there haven't been people who have been working in the streets mm -hmm. and trying to push for these things to happen. Certainly. And so while we're celebrating with, you know, and, and, and I think that that's, that's great, right. well, you know, mad ups to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, um, the Supreme Court ruling, mm -hmm. but TPA, man, like TPA. Well, you need to explain that on? to people who Minsk, don't know. Minsk. I'm so sorry I can't pronounce this That's correctly, right. but you know this is something very very simple to do. Right. In fact, I, I would even say it's just as simple as you know addressing Governor Deal to sign Medicaid expansion. 
Right. And so this could be, he could have actually, he could have left, you know, sort of like, not only did I do this, I also made peace with Russia. Right. I made peace with uh, the they Ukraine. They don't want peace. But they, they don't want peace. Well, see, right? let me just say you're very bright, both of you, uh, I mean, as younger people. But see, the, the this president has written executive orders for many different segments of our community. Oh, I agree. But that's why you're right. The black man's file got lost. The Hebrew Israelites, the colored folks, all of us, he's written executive orders for everybody else but us. So at the end of the day, the controlling factor of... Get in, y'all don't believe in voting. But my thing is... is no, that no, no, no. When I say us, I'm people, talking about... No, I don't need to vote. Black people, when Obama got, uh, got elected, you know, a lot of black people went out of their way to say he is not the president of black America. He's the president of America. And, and so, the, and so the thing is, is that if you are voting for someone to represent to re represent you, because that's who our president is. He's not God. He's not king. He's exactly. Not, he's not supposed to be exactly. this, this figure we're supposed to worship. Right. If we're supposed to vote somebody in who looks like us, who experiences the same things and understand, mm -hmm. he should behave in that manner. And if he's not behaving in that manner, we need to address that. Well, it's too late but, with uh, Malia it's, it's and too, Sasha not, no, and it's, it's, Michelle. No, it's not too late. They, like you said, this no. family has mesmerized no. the community. No, it's not too late because we still it's got It's not too Hillary. late for what? We still got Hillary. You don't. Know, <laughs> 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 well, I'm about to puke on it. <laughs> so, so the thing is, is that what I'm, what I'm encouraging is Bill more built more prisons than any. More Come on, accountability. Man. <laughs> You know, if we're going to talk about we're all about this peace, then our government should be leading the way and giving in giving those examples. And this is a direct the the the, the rejection of the minx minx that's right agreement. Yeah. Minx sorry, minx minx two. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm so sorry. Right. You you are on it. You are on it. You are on it. But you know, like you know, this was this this is blatant. Like he's blatantly yeah, saying, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Right. You know, I mean, he could have saved face. He could have said, well, I will support my Secretary of State. No, he is not. Well, it's very you know? He's, and he's and being he's, controlled. And he's, and he's throwing red herrings in other places saying, look at me doing all of these awesome things right. while I'm pushing through the same policies that my predecessor would have probably done. Right, exactly. Well, he brought in the administration of his predecessor, so what he else did you do? Think? Well, and that's exactly, sure you know, a, a very good point. He brought in everybody that's been dealing with Russia. He didn't make any change. Exactly. To who was going to deal with Russia and exactly. how the policy was going to be done. He said he wanted a reset with Russia. And then he allowed us to bomb Libya. Yeah, uh, no, come on. Right. Yeah. Exactly. We, we bombed Libya after we made an agreement with the Russians that we wouldn't do that. So, <laughs> And that's why Putin came back to power, actually. That's yes, one of the that's reasons. Right. Yeah. Really? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Because uh, Medvedev, who was the, he was getting kind of a test trial as president of, the, of Russia. Right. Uh, the agreement was at the UN. We wanted a no-fly zone because Gaddafi was killing his own people. That was the whole argument. That was the rhetoric. Mm -hmm. We wanted to implement the no-fly zone, and mm -hmm. Russia said, Medvedev was at the time the president. Russia said, fine, we'll give you, but you, you can't bomb them. And then we bombed them. Right, we did, we right. broke that promise yeah. to Russia, right. and they said, okay, we're putting Putin back in power because he will not right. negotiate with the U.S. Yeah. With terrorists. And yeah. <laughs> But Sorry. with that Come said, on. that doesn't, you know, I want to be very clear that, uh, you know, Minsk II is not an architecture that is going to make a, you know, a, a new Ukraine that is based on, uh, you totally. know, owner, no, people owning totally, communal, totally. communal totally. ownership or anything totally. like that. It's just going to stop the violence. Well, which is big. Right. You know, right. Right. And let me, let me just say this as we segue into the waning parts <laughs> of this program. What created ISIS? The, the jargon was that as a result of Gidmo and the abuses and the torture and the blatant uh, disrespect of any kind of rational reasoning in dealing with prisoners, that after these people were released or whatever, and the world, the Islamic world saw what was happening, they had to do something. But yet it wasn't spoken about, but on small clips of the uh, news that America left I mean, hordes of military armament to ISIS that they took control of. So in fact, America is financing ISIS. They create, they wag the dog. 
They, they <laughs> show you on one hand, oh, we're against war and we're against, you know, they have that puppet saying that. And on the other hand, they're financing it. That's why I say it's all controlled by money. The pe these nations are working together. Get in. These corporate industrialized entities. You have no entities. proof of this. You have yeah, no proof well, of this. Well, we just well, got through talking. Well, here's Plagiarism. the thing. If they're doing one thing on one side and doing something on the other side, at least let's call them out for doing it. At the very least. We're not, as a people, we're not even doing that here in the United States. As a people, we will sit there and say, we love our president, we love our government, you mm -hmm. know, it's the best place in the world, as they are breaking promises. I thank mean, you. that's low. You know, thank you say, you. Wait, wait, no, wait, 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 you say promises? Drink what, the Kool-Aid. What, what legislation did we, did we demand of Obama? That's what I was asking. Well, he said he was going to close Guantanamo. And he said he was going to raise the <laughs> He also okay. said he was going to raise lie, the minimum lie, wage pants on fire. Year. Okay, all right. And he, all right. he did put through, you know, when the people asked for $15 an hour, he, he did 10 He also issued an executive mm -hmm. order to stop a strike in Philadelphia. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. Um, <laughs> man, good job. That's why, that's why I love when Don and Kevin are on here. But, yeah. hey, we're going to we, – then we have a uh, Fourth of July weekend, and we're going to come back. We're going to deal with the federal government passing – was that the equal marriage? The, what, what's oh, that yeah. called? Marriage I'm, equality. I'm, marriage I'm equality. I'm ready for that. Yeah, right oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for that. There's gals ready, too, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> half half gavel, we'll travel. I'm going to have to bring my own gavel. Yeah, I'm going to have to bring my own gavel. I'm going to let you hold the gavel. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to have to let you hold the gavel. Hey, you're telling me you're not you're not having the Fourth of July celebration. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. Another tea party, baby. All right, we out. Peace. Peace. So they say, anyway. Yep. <laughs> Did we cut off the thing earlier? Is later? that my man, the ghetto <laughs> Messiah? Yeah. Oh man, you got muscles and everything. <laughs>